All right, Foot Clan, the good, the bad, the ugly, the studs, the duds, the stinkers, all of week one broken down right here, right now. Do not miss it. Now available at the grocery store, White Castle's one-of-a-kind slider. Oh, baby. Mm. Mm. They make the perfect snack or centerpiece for a meal and have that same one-of-a-kind taste that White Castle has been serving in their restaurant for years, craveable and convenient. Find out for yourself why White Castle sliders satisfy your crave anytime. Go to whitecastle.com slash footballers to get $1 off the purchase of any four- or six-pack White Castle sliders. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome to the show. Best show ever. It's going to be a good one. Mike is here. Jason is, well, Jason is very, very sick. <clears throat> in, I don't know if this is cause or effect. more than one. Jason wasn't even able to come into the studio yesterday to watch week one. He is sick at home. He sounds like some sort of, I don't know, like goblin. Like a like a Chris Goblin? Like a Chris Goblin. His voice is... Uh, He's lucky. I think it's disgusting. He's That's lucky. what I think. He's lucky that he has Friday's <clears throat> podcast on record because you could hear it. He sounded terrible. That on it was Friday. on the way. Yeah, yeah. No, and then he's like, I, "I probably shouldn't come in. My kids are getting sick from me." I'm like, "No, stay home." It's not like Jay Grizz can't handle things. Jay Grizz can't get sick, which is nice. No, no, he's, he's impervious. He's impervious to illness. Welcome to the show, Monday, September 9th. The Fantasy Footballers, and it's going to be a busy show. We've got Weekly Rewind. We've got oh man, Fantasy Stud Muffins. The opposite of the Stud Muffins. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what it has been on this show for forever. But we, we, got, have, we got something new for you, and you are not going to believe it. It is amazing. It's, it's stinker's coming your way. Uh-oh! It's, it's, it's stinker's coming your way. It is... Monday, which means Monday Pun Day, which means that we pulled the Foot Clan for some of their one-liner thoughts, oh, feelings, I, emotions from the weekend. I just realized what we need for this. A uh, drop? A drop, but then also just like some some fun music. Oh, while well, we read this. them. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. This could be a sensational thing. I apologize. We should develop the show live on the show. I think that's really <laughs> the best way to do it. All right, here's my first thought <laughs> for this segment. <laughs> All right, here are some one-liners that we got from Twitter. Carry on, nothing to see here. Oh, man. That's, yeah, we'll talk about that. That's troubling. Tyler Murray, not <laughs> bad, <laughs> not bad. Jameis, more like Lamus. Okay, that's just... <laughs> Whenever you're doing a punt, and look, as one who goes to this line frequently... Yeah, when just you the throw, rhyme. Yeah, when you go more like blah, that it's, you, it, you know it's bad. Yep, yep, <laughs> you know the pun is bad. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jared Barf. Jared Barf. Vanish McDonald. Ooh, I like that one. Vance, two catches. Not good. No. Nope. Mark Mandrews. <laughs> <laughs> he balled out. That can be said about any and all Baltimore Ravens this weekend. Yep. National Lampoon's Miami vacation. <laughs> oh, man. Did you see the report? About everybody wanting out? Yes. Run for the hills. Uh, booty poop and Cam Newton. Nice. All right, that's true. No J. Howard. What a rough game for O.J. Howard. Big time. We'll talk about that. Uh, Devonta free win. Not if you had him, but yeah, not a good week. I Weird. think that's what they mean. Yeah. If you played against him, you were very happy. Uh, the Jackson five touchdowns. That is Lamar Jackson. Uh, all right. <laughs> Stephon Diggs fantasy graves. In week one, he did. We were just talking before the show. 10 pass attempts yes. by Kirk Cousins. Yes, and hopefully you tuned into the the Sunday Live. For those of you that joined me Sunday morning, thank you. Also, thank you for enduring the, the weird tech dif- difficulties where I sounded like a demon. I, yeah. hear, I hear it was awesome. Uh, however, th- that, was, that was absolute fade, Stephon Diggs. When he's limited, 
Which he's that, lim- when he's limited, he's limited. Exactly. That and that was later news uh, over the weekend. So hopefully you tune into those. Yeah, uh, check us out on YouTube. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click the bell, get updated on all sorts of things. We just put a behind the scenes video up on Saturday uh, with our uh, basically our unboxing of this new helmet. Oh yes, the helmet we have on set now. And uh, follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We're still giving away that signed Alvin Kamara jersey, footclangiveaway.com. Uh, Jam packed show. Let's get into the rewind. Weekly rewind. All right. The weekly rewind brought to you by the Sleeper app. Antonio Brown. We haven't even got to talk about it yet. The wizard strikes again. Antonio Brown released by the Raiders. This was, what, Saturday morning as I opened my eyes? Yeah, Saturday was pure insanity if you were on Twitter. By 1 p.m. Pacific, <laughs> he had signed a one-year contract with the New England Patriots. The deal's worth up to $15 million. Found out this morning he has a 2020 fully guaranteed $20 million option. So if things go according to planned, he will make $20 million next year as a member of the New England Patriots. Yes. So all, all the people like, ah, oh, well, he lost $30 million. He found could, it. He could make 15 this year and 20 next year, and that's in two years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So fantasy-wise, everyone wants to know, yeah. how do you look at the situation? Uh, the way that I – first of all, you watch New England dismantle the Pittsburgh Steelers last night without Antonio Brown – the best receiver in football over the last seven, eight years. Now they get Antonio Brown. They get to add him to a team that saw, I mean, you had production out of Philip Dorsett last night, two touchdowns. You had massive production out of Rex Burkhead last night. Who looked great. Looked great. Currently healthy, apparently. And then Josh Gordon, big game. Julian Edelman runs the same route on every play. He does. (laughs) How, I be- do, how do they not know what's coming? The be- it reminds me, uh, shout out to Al Smiz on this one, because he, he posted, you know, why is he open on every play? He runs the same route every play. It reminds me of Wes Welker. I mean, yeah. you just run the same route every single play. For some reason, throws the invisibility cloak over, uh, cut left, cut right, <laughs> wide open. Because you're watching, going, oh, He's done it to me six times in a row. There's no way he's going to do it again. Yeah, he's going to mix it up here. No, he's just going to, you know, break open, catch the ball, and then he'll make a first down sign with his hand, and then we'll proceed down the field. And because people were asking for it all weekend on Twitter, I will acquiesce. Oakland Raiders. Stop helping the Patriots. They don't need your help. Uh, You feel good? Feel good about that? I feel a little bit better. Did you hear what Big Ben had to say about Antonio Brown going to the Patriots? I did not. What did he say? He went with a very adolescent whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that, let me translate that for our listeners. That means I'm furious. <laughs> what on earth are they doing? So, fantasy-wise, I think it I think it hurts Edelman. I think it hurts Gordon. I think it hurts uh, both these players because you cannot bring in a guy like Antonio Brown who will demand 10 to 12 targets a game and not hurt s- the other players' ceilings. That doesn't mean that they can't coexist. If you played Edelman, Gordon, Philip Dorsett last night, you were right. s- you were dancing in the streets. Yep. But I think it hurts both players. You know, a player like Josh Gordon, I'll, I'll bring this up because we were talking about this before the show. Josh Gordon does not live on volume. He lives on... on uh, Big, big plays. plays, yeah. Because he's he's an 18-plus per catch player, touchdowns, big plays. There's an argument that can be made that those aren't really – he's not going to get fewer opportunities on deep balls and things like that, and his volatility is probably similar. But you said you thought Edelman's going to be fine too, so yeah. are we making too much about nothing with Antonio Brown? Uh, I, I think the biggest hit for uh, the Patriots stock, it's Josh Gordon – and it'll be interesting to see what happens to James White when you have Wes Welker and, or I'm sorry, uh, Julian Edelman and Antonio Brown, who can both eat up the middle of the field. I went back and looked just to make sure, you know, I, I wasn't remembering things from crazy land, but when Randy Moss was dominating on the Patriots, Wes Welker, who Julian Edelman plays that role, 
was perfectly fine the year that Randy Moss had 23 touchdowns. Wes Welker, 112 receptions, 1,175 yards. The next year, they both – like. Can they, I counterpoint that, though? Sure. Can I bring a different perspective? Randy Moss did not have Josh Gordon on the other side of the field. Yeah, that's Josh Gordon is definitely – And they aren't going to throw the ball as much as that team. They might. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I certainly don't think the production will be the same as last night. They didn't rush in a touchdown. They they have these games. This happens a lot. Brady can go from four touchdowns to one, and Sonny Michelle or Rex Burkett could have two, three touchdowns on the ground. Yeah, so I'm not arguing with the fact when you bring in the best wide receiver in football, of course it has a negative impact volume wise but i just i think of the guys that wes welker is or i keep doing it man well i brought him up it's yeah. my fault you've infected me that it's julian my fault. Edelman, i can't expect you to be accurate julian edelman will be he's still going to be super safe yeah i yeah i i i'm telling you he will be very very safe as what as what you drafted him to do hmm. last night six for 83 no touchdowns yeah that's a great game like that's what you drafted at Julian Edelman to do with the upside of a touchdown, but more than five receptions. He, he's a he's a PPR guy. They get Ben Watson back in Week Five. Gronk will probably wind up I, undefeated season. Patriots. <laughs> Antonio Brown, though, I view this as a better efficiency situation, lower volume situation than what he would have had in Oakland. I don't think the targets are going to be what they would have been in Oakland. Agreed. But I, you know. You're with the better quarterback on a better offense, so I don't really view him any different than where I would have ranked him draft season-wise with Oakland. Do you agree with that? Yep. Okay. Well, we'll talk more about the Patriots, I bet, over the course of this year. Injury-wise, Nick Foles, diagnosed with a broken collarbone out indefinitely. Gardner Minshew is the starting quarterback and uh, company line. They feel comfortable with that. <laughs> they, feel, they feel real good about it. I wouldn't, but... He was, he was fine. Yeah. Like, he came in for uh, what he had to do. I think he was a six-round pick. He came in, and he played very well. Can I just – if you want to yell at the Raiders for letting the Patriots have Antonio Brown, can I yell at the Jacksonville Jaguars for being an undisciplined team that is just fully disappointing all of their fans? I mean, this defense – well, you know, Miles, oh, gotcha. Miles Jack gotcha. getting thrown from the game. Leonard Fournette getting into it after every single play. Jalen Ramsey getting into it in the end zone on every single play. You got torched, people. And now you're going to be the backbone of this team while Gardner Minshew leads the offense. D.D. Westbrook ended up in kind of third position in this game. D.J. Chark and uh, Chris Conley, better games than... Westbrook and Westbrook had that connection with Foles. This has to be concerning for you. Yes, yeah, the, part, not you, but for for Westbrook oh, yeah, owners is what I mean because you you own Westbrook. Like th half of the argument for why I liked my sweetie D.D. Westbrook so much was Nick Foles. I right, mean, I, I don't know what <laughs> Gardner, <laughs> the secret garden. Did you, ever, did you have to read that oh, book when you were growing I up? I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, it was painful. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully Gardner Minshew is, is, is better garden. than the secret garden. Uh, he came in and went like 11, 11, to op 11 for 11 That's to a, open his yes. uh, career. Tyreek Hill exited with a collarbone issue. This is a major story, guys. Rappaport says the Chiefs <laughs> the Chiefs are going to take a couple days before deciding <laughs> what? Tyreek Hill's future. Options could be missing a few games. He could be IR designated to return. I missed this part. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I, that's a lizard, Mike. I get what you're doing with your voice. Oh, he's... Oh! That is... Oh! The Lizard King! Can I speak for Jason <laughs> this morning? He's very happy. <laughs> he's very pleased. Um, <clears throat> see, I, I still think that you should try to guard Sammy Watkins. That would be step one if you want to stop him. But he did break his career record for yardage in week one. And I was talking to Jason a little bit last night. With no Tyreek Hill... For an indefinite period of time, how high do you bring Sammy Watkins in the landscape of of, of offensive weapons? And he's got to be a top I, fifteen guy with top five upside. Weekly. I think what you're trying to say is, by invocation, we live, we self actualize, we vibrate, we are reborn. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. I am not trying to say that, but I appreciate <laughs> the wise words from Sammy Watkins. If you 
I, it came to my attention people don't know why we call him the Lizard King. Well, it's very simple. He claimed to be a lizard person on Twitter. Yeah, he with said, a straight face. He said, "I'm a whole different species. I'm convinced I'm not a human. Never was. I'm more like an advanced reptilian solar being. I'm very powerful. It kind of scares me. LOL." Okay, that sounds made up, but it's not. I don't care because the lizard king is coming. Lizard, a lizard or human, both the fantasy points count the same. And so he's called the Lizard King, and he was king of that field last night. Looked super fast. He's not on my teams. Yeah, that's got to feel bad. Maybe, because <laughs> he feels bad every other week. So if he stays healthy, he's going to dominate. Yes. I mean, uh, no doubt about it. After what you saw last night, Tyreek Hill leaving the field, you need to think about McCall Hardman. Because oh, if, if Tyreek Hill yes. ends up on IR designated to return, and with Sammy Watkins' health being kind of uh, – you know, things change. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, the Lizard King is his body is a little bit fragile. Hardman will be in an ad, and but like the comps I had seen to Tyreek Hill, the the injury, the same amount of time to come back, they were averaged about four to five weeks. So this IR designated to return thing is is shocking to me. Yeah, and maybe the injury is worse than. Well, it's a, it told. became a medical issue, not just an orthopedic issue. Right. It became something. He had, he's in the hospital under observation. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to pretend to be a doctor from this point forward, but he, he's got an issue that is prolonged, and they need to be careful with it. Tevin Coleman, ankle sprain, going to miss time. Matt Breida is the starter. Yes. And, and Raheem Mostert will and get work. Colonel Mustard is back, and he's a, he's a fine player. Like, yes, he is. The way that we looked at Coleman and Breida, you know, one of them's a running back two, one's a flex play. That's how I'm going to look at Moster now as a flex play. Tomorrow's the waiver show, but I'm going to put you on the spot, Mike. Ooh. Most, if you're picking somebody up, deeper league, whatever, would you pick up Mostert or would you pick up Mike Davis? I would pick up mm, Mostert. Yeah, as would I. Okay. Mike Williams, knee injury, forced from the Sunday game. I don't have any other news on that as of this time. Brooks is shaking his head. I'm watching for you call, it. You're calling all of your people, and they have no information for you. Nothing yet. Juju Smith-Schuster limped off. Uh, he expects to be ready for week two. There was a report this morning he was getting x-rays, precautionary. But uh, Juju, toe injury, fourth quarter of the whooping they experienced last night. Albert Wilson exited Dang. with a calf injury. Mm -hmm. Devin Funches suffered a broken collarbone. Pay attention yes. to Deion Kane. Yep. Pay attention to Deion Kane, who should start on uh, in place of Devin Funches. Will Disley. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> no, this music's too happy. That sounds like he's okay. He exited he's, with the knee injury. Yeah, this is... That's unfortunate. Look, you come back from the injury that Will Disley suffered, re-aggravation of something of else is, is very possible. Adrian Peterson, Damian Harris, Jordan Reed all did not play. Peterson and Harris were healthy and active. This was the problem with Damian Harris all along. I did not – the math never added up for him being active on game day if Michelle, Burkhead, and company special teams weapons were ready to rumble, James White. So uh, no AP, though. Monitor this situation, fantasy owners, because yes. Peterson's not happy. The team's not happy. Darius Geis went 10 for 18, and – Peterson, unhappy, generally just leaves town at this point in his career. Yeah, the last time he was unhappy, he got traded from New Orleans to the Cardinals. Yeah, and this could happen again. If they want to go forward with Geis and Geis alone, then Peterson... Well, it's not, it, it not just Geis. Like, it's the, the inactive nature of Adrian Peterson that actually made it uh, a lot easier to know what Washington was going to do with the backfield. You knew that that it was Geis and that Chris Thompson is going to be involved, and, and Thompson was right back in there getting all that passing work if you if you can safely remove move yourself as far away from any Miami Dolphin as you as you possibly can Ryan Fitzpatrick pulled in the second half of this game it was a I I believe Baltimore could have scored 100 points on them if they wanted to sure so um it's not a it's not a pretty picture in Miami right now and I believe they have New England you are correct. Okay. That's not going to be good. All right. Weekly Rewind News and Notes brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of fantasy news. We're going to get into the stud muffins. We're going to get into the stinkers. We're going to talk so, so much today about fantasy football. Isn't that right, Mike? <laughs> That's right. 
Oh, uh, but before we do that, we want to thank today's sponsor. You know we've been talking about it for a while, and I get hyped every single time because World of Warcraft Classic is available now. I've been playing. Get back into Azeroth, ladies and gentlemen. Coming just in time for the game's 15th anniversary, the World of Warcraft Classic invites players to return to the world of Azeroth just as it was during its earliest days. This faithful, authentic recreation captures the, the danger, 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 the excitement and yep. the glory of the original game. I love World of Warcraft. I wish I was in there right now. I have been in there. It is the perfect <laughs> antidote to Twitter. Look, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not bad at all. Uh, if you want to jump in, there's so much more to discover and explore. WoW Classic is included with your regular World of Warcraft subscription at no additional cost. You can switch between the original experience, that OG, and the latest content as you see fit. World of Warcraft Classic is available to play right now. Head to wowclassic.com slash fantasyfootballers to learn all about it and get ready to relive the legend. What's that address again, Mike? Wow. WowClassic.com slash fantasy footballers. Okay, and we also want to thank Lightstream. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, if you refinance your credit card balances, you can lower the interest rate you're paying on them. It can save you money. And what they do is they give a credit card consolidation loan. They bring all those credit card debts that you're dealing with together, and it can be 5.95% APR. A normal credit card is probably s stinging you. For like 19, 20% APR. Stinging you like the Patriots passing game. It's not, yeah, which is painful if yes. you're on the other end of it. And so basically it's a, it's that simple. Lightstream provides these credit card consolidation loans uh, with auto pay, 5.95%. And you can save thousands in interest. It can help you clean up whatever debt you have going on. And the only way to get that discount is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers. It's subject to credit approval. The rate includes a 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash footballers for more information. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash footballers. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. We're going to talk about the studs before the duds, Mike. Okay. Studs before the duds. And... I realized no matter how many warnings you give yourself or those around you, it's impossible not to overreact to week one. It's a sure. I, I think if you did one of those sports science things uh -huh. and you analyzed all of the the brain chemistry mm -hmm. in a fantasy football player, it it would be it would be proven that it's impossible for people <laughs> not to react. Because if you combine Brooks is nodding, if you combine anticipation. And you multiply it by Twitter, then you end up in tilt. I think the end result of that is tilt squared. Yes. So let's talk about the studs. Let's talk about the duds. Let's talk about these big time performances. Let's not project them over 16 weeks, statistically, but let's talk about what we liked and what we didn't like. Lamar Jackson was fire. Yes. 17 for 20, 324 and 5. He didn't even run the ball. Yeah. So, I loved his comment in the press conference. He said, pretty good for a running back, right? Oh, Three for six on goodness. the ground. Didn't need it. So here he is one of the hardest week one breakdowns that you have to do because he he hit on everything. He only I mean, he only threw the ball 20 times, but 324 yards. That's outrageous. But he was playing the Miami Dolphins, who are trusting the process and as – you heard us say half the team is already trying to get traded off of the team. So it's it's tough to say that this is the normal for Lamar Jackson, but his success with Hollywood Marquise Brown was was unbelievable. I, are you hovering over the breaking news button? I'm not willing to hit it over this, but the Jaguars have just traded for Steelers quarterback Joshua Dobbs okay. for a fifth-round pick, so they're adding depth behind Minshew. They're so confident in Minshew, they just traded a fifth-round pick for Josh well, Dobbs. No, I know, you need depth. But you could have hired somebody off of the off the street. Could have brought in a veteran off the street, too. So I wouldn't say you're that confident. Sure. But uh, you can continue on your sure. Lamar Jackson dive. So just, <clears throat> yes, take your week one victory lap, Lamar Jackson truthers of 
of he's going to be better throwing the ball. Absolutely. Well, sure. It's well deserved. I will. But it, he's. Uh, are you with me though that like breaking down his future is is tougher than some of these guys who had a, a smash week one? I I would say that his future is bright because he didn't lean on what he needed to get fantasy points last year. We've talked about how he finished the season last year, and it was all of these games that were not top-end explosions. This is the first time he's ever done this. Right. So, yes, are, are the Ravens as good as they were against the Dolphins every week of the year? No. Are the Steelers as bad as they were against the Patriots every week of the year? No. But Lamar Jackson should be as safe a quarterback as it gets. And you got to see... Mark Andrews and Hollywood Brown and the impact that they'll right. have on the offense. Even Mark Ingram moving the ball on the ground. You got to see some of that. And that should have validated, uh, I think, any uh, hope you had for the offense to be really good. This is a great team. Yeah. So they have Arizona at home next week. Then they go on the road against Kansas City. Then they face Cleveland, who just gave up 43 at home against the Titans. It should be smooth sailing for Lamar Jackson for the next four weeks. Yeah, he's set up. Three weeks. So, and they're at home in two thirds of those games. So, Lamar is set up starting. Yeah. And if you drafted him late and you had another option, you know, like Jameis, you can go ahead and cut him. Yep. Go, go with the one quarterback system right now. So, uh, he had a monster game. Dak Prescott. Oh, man. I will say this. Oh, man. 25 for 32, 405 and four. Again, you don't want to evaluate the entire season by one week. This looked really good. There was no team I was more impressed with than Dallas this week, and that is a top-to-bottom analysis situation. I wanted to see Kellen Moore. Dak was driving the ball downfield repeatedly. Gallup, Cooper, Zeke was back. The offensive line looked incredible. I was so jealous as a Cardinal fan watching this offensive line give Dak time. It just changes everything. You can't, you can't call a downfield passing offense without protection. It's impossible. So they were incredibly impressive to me. They yeah. have Washington coming up, Miami, New Orleans. Mike, what do you think about Dak? Uh, Dak, he was one of our values in the ultimate draft kit, and I am, I like Lamar, and it, but At I'm, I'm sad I don't have Dak in more places. Like the, the impact of Kellen Moore as the OC, this was not the Cowboys of the last three years. Who are they? they have great pieces, but it just never – pans out because your OC is living in 1980s football. Like There was motion all over the place. They're creating mismatches. The offensive line is dominant once again. I think Dak is going to be an incredible fantasy wide receiver. Yes, this was against the Giants. Even quarterback even. Did I, what did I call you him? You did call him a wide receiver. Oh, I apologize. Which I doubt his wide receiver production will be what his quarterback production is. It was against the New York Giants. Yep. So... We're taking it with a little bit of a grain of salt, but just like Lamar Jackson, let's look at the schedule. Washington, Miami. Those are the next two teams on the docket for Dak Prescott. It's going to be a great start. And he had only thrown for 300 yards in five of his 48 career starts before this. I expect more downfield passing from Kellen Moore. And with a healthy Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup, both those players can win one-on-one -on -one matchups. Both those players can come down with the 50-50 ball. That's why I like it. Case Keenum, big week. Patrick Mahomes against Jacksonville. Jacksonville uh, did not stop Patrick Mahomes. Patrick right. Mahomes, I believe, had the most passing yardage in his career in the first half. So he's pretty good. But now, without Tyreek, do you downgrade your expectations for Patrick Mahomes at all? Um, As Oakland, Baltimore, Detroit coming up. No, considering he did this with basically without Tyreek Hill. I mean, that's true. The, the, uh, this is this is where we get to really see uh, the second round draft pick, Nicole Hardman. Carson Wentz, Matthew Stafford, Tom Brady, Marcus Mariota, very yeah. efficient. Helps when a screen pass goes seventy five to the house to Derrick Henry. Probably an outlier <laughs> to me. I wouldn't be leaning on Mariota in fantasy leagues. No, I would not. But uh, let's. Matthew Stafford to me that was just that was the matchup and Staff Stafford's a good quarterback if he's in a plus matchup he can do these types of things he also had overtime to help pad some of his numbers but Tom Brady I didn't draft Tom Brady anywhere I wanted nothing to do with him he's probably on some waiver wires he is probably on some waiver wires what is your kind of gut reaction to that 
performance of 341 yards for th- and three touchdowns for touchdown Tommy. He's a top 10 quarterback. Okay. With Antonio Brown. That's what I think. It doesn't mean you're not you got volatility problems in New England at all times cuz they could run in four touchdowns on a certain week and Tom Brady isn't the, you know, I don't think that they're building this offense for him to do for, you know, to go 404 every week like 2017. But the weapons are unbelievable. He's still got it, and he gets to go play Miami next week. So if you have Tom Brady, you just start him up and smile. Phillip Rivers, big game. Mike, you said we, we didn't talk about Phillip Rivers. He's in the yeah. Matthew Stafford stream him in the right matchup category to me. And they play each other next week. So I would rather have Rivers next week than I would Matthew Stafford. Is that fair? It's fair. Running backs with big games. Christian McCaffrey, you know he's good. <laughs> He's just, one of the top ten running backs that delivered in a big way for you. It's just funny the the all that talk out of Carolina. We gotta get Christian McCaffrey some help. We gotta get him some rest. No, they almost stole that game. No, no, ten for eighty one through the air, eleven targets. Yeah, and Cam was bad. Cam Newton, uh, I got a little nauseous watching him play football. Yeah, but not Christian McCaffrey. Monster game. Uh, how about this, Austin Eckler? Three touchdowns, 12 for 58 and one on the ground, six for 96 and two through the air. He was the offense. He's yes. the fourth player in the last 10 seasons with 150 scrimmage yards and three touchdowns in a season opener. Tyreek did it in 2018. Kareem Hunt did it in 2017. Arian Foster. This my, this was outstanding. My old friend, 2010. This was outstanding. My my. My insane prediction of Austin Eckler as a running back one off to a very hot start. How's Melvin Gordon feeling watching his teams having no problem on offense without him? Uh, probably bad, Mike. Probably bad. I mean, he still didn't get paid, and there were reports he's coming back week six through eight yeah, this we'll, weekend. We'll see. That, that was reported. So uh, he might want to scoot that time up. <laughs> and that's the, that's the only part. That's the only – Danger of any Austin Eckler or Justin Jackson hype. Sure. It's just the fact that the day that Melvin Gordon walks back into the building with his tail between his legs, he will hurt Austin Eckler. Yeah. Tremendously. And, and then the Austin Eckler, Justin Jackson, the the snap counts that people were like, we had to see it. It was Austin Eckler. This They did what they've done in the past and what they did in the preseason. They did not do what they've said of this 50-50 stuff. It was Our Austin Eckler. Big games Derek Henry and Marlon Mack Marlon Mack 25 for 174 in one through one week the Colts look like a very talented team which is not the same team we had in 2017 under Jacoby Brissett yes they lost the game in overtime but they came back 24 24 good defense against the Chargers Marlon Mack 174 Mike what is the truth of Marlon Mack um it's tough because... Tennessee next week on the road, that should be a tougher matchup. Because going into halftime, Marlon Mack had eight carries for 21 yards. Well, and, the second second half player, Mike. Yeah, look, I'm not taking that away from him. Just saying that it looked really, really bad for a half, and then he, and he busted off a career-long 63-yard touchdown run. That certainly helps things out, but... Yep, I, I was on the side of... I think that the Colts, it's going to be really tough to trust any of their, their fantasy weapons, but... We'll see what happens. Was proven wrong week one. Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook. Derrick Henry, the beat continues. In Cleveland, thought it would be tough for him to get moving. But game script in this one lent itself to a lot of carries late. They generally win when Derrick Henry gets a lot of carries. And the the day was made on, a, on his one reception. Yes. Misdirection play, 75 yards up the sideline. Looked slow on film. What was crazy was to me. really fast on the strides. <laughs> like, it was like a gazelle. Watching him is it's impossible to gauge what is happening because you like this this man. I could beat this guy in a foot race. Meanwhile, the NFL defenders they have, can't catch they him. can't catch him. So it's so wild. Do you expect things to continue for Derrick Henry? I think he'll be a fine play. But if you're expecting 150 total yards and two touchdowns every week, then I think you're going to be upset. Uh, big weeks from Dalvin Cook, Mark Ingram, David Johnson, Chris Carson, a couple of touchdowns, including this is the headline. Yes. Six receptions for yes. Chris, Chris Carson. So far, 
So good. Yeah. For my guy. You know, it's it's this is fantastic news for Chris Carson. I mean, not super efficient. Like six receptions for thirty five yards. That's that's not what you're hoping for, but when they couldn't get the run game going, they started throwing the ball to Chris Carson. Russell Wilson only threw the ball twenty times and six receptions for Chris Carson. So it's it's looking very well for for Carson to be a workhorse and, and be awesome. I agree with you. Yeah, it's it's looking good. Lev Bell, nice nice first week. Six for thirty two yeah. and a touchdown through the air, seventeen carries, sixty yards. Got has Cleveland next week. And then do we want to talk about the Malcolm Brown Tide Gurley thing? You have to talk about it just from the 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 structure that they were splitting time. Todd Gurley did not get any goal line carries, and Todd Gurley was actually most used at the end of the game. So it was this was upside down what we thought would yeah. happen. At well, all the for game the was not the game was not put away. So Gurley had the majority of the snaps, right? I mean, the snaps fifty three. Yes, Malcolm Brown twenty one, but Malcolm Brown with the two touchdowns. That's, he'll be a popular pickup. Maybe he should be. I think he well, he, yeah, he he should be picked up. But that's the problem for Gurley. Like Gurley was fine, fourteen for ninety seven, started gouging the defense at the end of the game. But they went to Malcolm Brown in the high fantasy scoring plays. Malcolm Brown had two rushing touchdowns. Like I'm trying not to freak out over week one, but that's that's pretty scary. There were things to like about Gurley in week one. He looked explosive the majority of the snaps. There were things to not like. You know, the fact that it was you know, 14 total carries in the game, in a competitive game, where Malcolm Brown had 11. And only so, one target. But the, these were kind of the, the red flags for Gurley. We knew that, that the Gurley of old, those days were done. Yeah. So maybe we saw our first preview. I think they're going to be very good weeks for Todd Gurley. But I think that you're also going to have weeks like this, where you're just kind of frustrated as a Gurley owner saying, all right, I got 97 yards on the ground. Very efficient. Very efficient. He has the capability of being that Alvin Kamara efficiency in this offense. But, but he's has to get goal line. He does. Uh, to, to provide value based on where you drafted him. Yeah. like yeah. It, you're For a player that you drafted at the back of the first, the early second, 97 yards wasn't what you were hoping for. All right. I encourage our listeners to follow Robert Wilson, one of our staff writers at the FF Gator. He was dropping the fire on Twitter this weekend, and – he wrote an article, 10 Things We Learned in Week 1. It's on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Quoting him, he said, The NFL is becoming a league that's dominated by one thing, that is speed. Look at this week, the studs at the wide receiver position. Sammy Watkins. Oh, oh in. The Lizard King, 9 for 198 and 3 on 11 targets. Oakland, Baltimore, Detroit coming up. Deshaun Jackson stole my soul this weekend. And I don't even know how to feel. Because Deshaun Jackson was 8 for 154 and 2 on 10 targets. I own him in every league. Every league. How long have I been talking about Deshaun Jackson? This is why you should feel bad. Because you well, you looked in the mirror and you said, now my fault. I'm going to bench him. It's my fault. I benched him in every league. Freaking Marvin Jones in my roster. Deshaun Jackson on my bench. And I want to be happy, but I am sad <laughs> because I was worried about the finger. And I tell you what, Mike, I had him in my lineup in our league of record 10 minutes before game time. You know what swayed me? I was on the fence. I had you have Emmanuel Sanders. I'm on the fence with this decision. If one of these knuckleheads comes on the TV and says, says Deshaun Jackson, put the splint on. And he said, quote, it's, no, it's like nothing I've ever felt. In that's my what, life. That's what DJ said? That's what DJ said. He's this, never – a wide this, receiver? He's this never split. felt a splint. He said it's like nothing I've ever played with. That was the quote. Like in a good way? No, a not in way? a good way. Not a magic splint, Mike. <laughs> well. It's a negative connotation. So I said, you know what? Maybe he's there to take the top off the defense and be a pretend distraction. Maybe I'll outthink myself today. That's what I said to myself, and I did. And he's on – and I would have won all my leagues. Yeah. But – he was great. Yeah, Eight was, for one fifty four and two, and the ten targets now changes things, the team. It changes Carson Wentz, man. That's yes, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. It changes Carson Wentz. Uh, however, if you watched the game, Washington strangely 
got out to an early lead, and Philadelphia had to come back. Philadelphia covered their massive spread, but they no, they were, didn't. They did. <laughs> oh, not. that's right. They did at not. The very, Trey Quinn scored. That's at the right. End. That's right. I apologize. Woo! <laughs> they they were, did not cover. So they had it covered until there was like ten seconds. That's left. correct. Uh, have, but they had to come back. Yep. So they, I don't expect I would ten say, targets for DJ no. on a weekly basis, but. There's, Having that built in is pretty nice. There's more truth than mirage with Deshaun Jackson sure. in this performance. But you are right. They had to come back. They had to throw the ball. Atlanta, Detroit coming up. John Ross, 7 for 158 and 2 on 12 targets. This one's fascinating. Is he legitimate? We'll talk more on the waiver show tomorrow. Is there more mirage here against Seattle? The two big-time plays, the two touchdowns? John Ross... Just scores touchdowns. That's what right. his career has been. Either and n- normally they've been like one one for one yard and a yes. touchdown. And the hard thing to decipher with John Ross, I'm excited to go back and watch. But twelve targets. That's incredible volume. But is is the Seattle secondary just that bad? I think you're gonna be really disappointed in John Ross next week against okay. San Francisco. Okay. But you're gonna have to make that call on waiver day, whether you like him more than some of the other names that we bring up. Uh, it, it certainly was, I, I'm sure somewhere Marvin Lewis is going, yeah, buddy. <laughs> he was a first round Glad pick. I spent that first round pick on and him. And he's really fast. He, he look speed dominated Marquise Hollywood Brown four for one forty seven and two. The hype, the performance, the Ravens, Lamar Marquise Brown will be one of the most targeted free agent wide receivers. Yes. He played 12 snaps, Mike. Yeah. That's what I was hoping we would bring up. So is that a good or bad thing, though? Because you can spin it both directions, right? He only played 12 snaps, so four for 147 and two. That's an anomaly. The other way is he's banged up. He could only play 12 snaps. Look what he did with it. More snaps are coming for Hollywood Brown, and this team looked amazing. The I would say it's great because you know that that's in there. I mean, it's very similar. This is like a – it's like Tyreek Hill. It's like Marquise Brown is just going to be faster than everybody. But it's bad from the point of – when does he actually going to get serious snaps? Because you you can't just do this on, on 10 to 12 snaps every single week. And people are going to pay huge amounts of money to get him off of the waiver wire. And in the realm of possibilities for Marquise Brown next week, one for seven. And then that's so the, that's where it's bad news. Is that Would you rather have Deshaun Jackson or Marquise Brown? D-Jax. Okay. I assume Brown over John Ross. Ooh, I think that that that's like definite for me, only f- because John Ross is not going to represent the one in that offense, and there's a time when AJ Green's returning. Marquise Brown could right. evolve into the one. Yeah, he could. Uh, th- uh, you've talked me into it. T. Y. Hilton, eight for eighty-seven and two on nine targets against the Chargers defense. T. Y. Yeah. Hilton looking game. really T. Y. Hilton like yes. in this game. And then you had some of these other anomalous games. We won't spend too much time on them. We'll talk more on the waiver show tomorrow. But Philip Dorsett, a couple touchdowns. Terry McLaurin had a big touchdown also, and he was one of those undrafted gyms. I know you love him, Mike, as yeah, well. I do. As a kind of like pay attention to him. He got deep, wide open again later in the game. Speed kills, man. And he was open. Case Keenum missed him on the second one. But looked very interesting in this game. And they might be coming back a lot. So yes. there's a lot. There's some kind of like sneaky Terry McLaurin upside. The rookies this week: Marquise Brown, yep. AJ Brown, Terry McLaurin. There's another rookie too, who are people are going to lose their minds for. We're not to his position yet, though. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Um, John Brown, John seven, Brown. It was seven for one twenty-three and one on ten targets. John Brown is he's a big pickup. He is very, very interesting off of the waiver wire. We we move we we miss Keenan Allen. But this is what I had talked about. If Mel, when Melvin Gordon is out, Keenan Allen is going to be freaking outrageous. And if Mike Williams is hurt, Keenan Allen is going You're to be even more outrageous. Even more targeted. Truly, truly outrageous. Larry Fitzgerald will not die. Eight for one, <laughs> 13 and one. And and this is not just – 13 targets for Larry. If you want to – we didn't even talk about Kyler Murray or that game. Kyler Murray ended up with almost 30 fantasy points. They, they practically all came in the fourth quarter. The offense looked atrocious, like a train wreck. Like we were weeping, I think, yes, for we a, were. a large period of time uh, of that game. And then everything switched when he started throwing the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. And Larry made play after play after play, diving catches, getting loose deep. Uh, Larry, 
Are you interested in him on the basis of this? Yes. You know, the, the it, offense coming alive. Yeah, and I think that he's he's sneaky. Uh, like these other wide receivers, there's a lot of wide receivers who are going to be very popular on the waiver wire. I think you might be able to get Fitz a little bit cheaper. And what you're hoping for is when the offense finally clicked and you there was a there was a press conference with Cliff Kingsbury where he came out and he openly admitted that he screwed up on the he almost said he that got entire too, game. He got too cute in the beginning, yes. changed that philosophy, and to his credit, it turned things around for the Cardinals. Yeah, so I think that Larry could be a sneaky pickup. Unfortunately, he's on the road against the Baltimore Ravens next week. Yeah. Uh, Evan Ingram, TJ Hawkinson, Mark Andrews, Delaney Walker with five for 55. Oh! So real home runs here for our value tight ends. Mark Andrews, eight for 108 and one. Love it. Arizona next week. Arizona just gave up six for 131 and one to TJ Hawkinson in his debut. TJ Hawkinson is a yes. very good football player. He will be on the field for 100% of snaps. That is all I'm going to say. We'll talk more tomorrow. Uh, oh, really? Do you believe, Mike, I get the impression from you that you believe this is uh, less indicative of a, a, the season. TJ Hawkinson, the rookie tight end. It He is extremely difficult because he is a great player. He's got that top 10 draft pedigree. Like He's, he's great. But the Cardinals' defense is so bad. Like the two big plays, I mean, it's 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 hard. I'm trying. I'm not trying to take away from what no, Hawkins I, I, did, but the two big plays were so broken by the defense of the Cardinals. I mean, his touchdown. Hawkinson had time to sit down. He built a campfire. Yep. He built one of those, like the real hard to put together tents. This wasn't just a pop up. No, no, no. A whole bunch of those, uh, the stick pieces, like, and you had to stretch them. He went them. to the crowd. He got like five Eagle Scouts to come help him set up camp in, in the end zone. I don't think that's a credit to Eagle Scouts if it takes five of them to build a tent. Well, he just wanted to give them the experience of okay. being on the NFL field during an actual play because most the people point in the is crowd the don't get to do that. The Cardinals defense gave, uh, there were four players that couldn't stop the play. Yeah. Hawkinson. Though, he also had a huge play down the sideline. He's got speed, awareness, pass-catching capabilities. Yeah. And Matthew Stafford's going to fall in love with him. That's what I believe. Okay. And so, when you look at Hawkinson and potential upside, is 6 131 and one going to happen every week? No. Not even close. Because you should also throw in then, on in the same breath, Danny Amendola went 7 for 104 with a touchdown. His teammate. And if you're like... Looking at what Danny Amendola did and said, man, that's that's impossible to do, then you at least have to be aware of what happened with Hawkinson as well. All right, we talked about the studs. It's time to talk about the duds. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. That's right, Foot Clan. <laughs> this is not a drill. The stinkers are brought to you by Odor Eaters. The stink, the, yes! the stink was so bad for some of these players this week that I think only odor eaters <laughs> and a high dose would be enough to I'm so excited uh, protect you from what happened. But I will say this: if you need if you need to breathe a little bit, if you need to calm down a little bit, if you're tilting, I've gotten Twitter messages about do I sell, sell, sell? Somebody sent me a roster that was great, had Sony Michelle in it. Do I sell everything? Do I? Is it all over for me? Go look at our consistency chart, okay? It's the best play. Devontae Adams. Are you selling Devontae Adams, Mike? No. Okay. Did he have a good week? No. Okay. It's never, it's never 16 for 16 other than maybe one or two guys every year. You know, Saquon didn't score. He's, he was fine because he's Saquon. The rest of these players, you're playing probability. This whole show is predicated on we try to analyze the matchups, bring you as many good players as we can that we like, that we're playing, you know, and we go down with the same ship. I mean, I benched Deshaun Jackson because we said on the show, I'm worried about the finger. Is right. he going to be active? An hour before game time, it was like, okay, he will be active. And I played the Lizard King. You played the Lizard King, <laughs> and, 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 I, and, and I, I don't have him to play. I won only because of him because the rest of my team. Yeah, we're going to talk about the rest of your team in a yeah, minute. Yeah, we are. Stinkers. Let's start with my quarterback. Stinkers of the week at the quarterback position. 
Cam Newton. Oh, J- yeah, I had him. Jameis Winston, Jared Garf, who, who looked so bad. To he me. looked he looked he looked Trubisky out there. He really did. That's I was gonna say the same thing. Baker Mayfield. Three mm-hmm. picks. Uh oh. This offensive line looks like it's in trouble. Yeah. And then Big Ben couldn't figure out who to throw the ball to outside of Juju. Uh this offense looks troubling. So Cam, Winston, Goff, Mayfield, Big Ben, who are you most worried about? Uh I'm I'm cutting Jameis. I'm moving on a, until I see some sort of actual st- hot streak from Winston where it looks like Bruce Arians and company has things under control because for him to go up against San Francisco and, and the performance that he put up, to his credit, he did throw two touchdowns to Cameron Brait, neither of which counted, but Jameis was bad. He San Francisco's really secondary looks a lot better. I will give him that. They look like a much better team than the team that gave up 25 points a game and the 105 passer rating. And that's the thing that, you you know, turnover year to year. They look right. like a better defense. I tweeted that Jameis Winston sucks at football and Bruce Arians can't do anything about it. And it's it's and not that, an unfair statement, but unfortunately. But you can suck at football and be great for fantasy. Sure. So don't – I wouldn't be th- – I mean, look – you drafted Jameis Winston so late that you don't need to keep him. There's no need. But streaming Winston, once we figure out what defenses are vulnerable this year, I'm fine with it. Okay. Because Bruce Arians is going to drive the ball down the field. So as much as hard as it was to watch fadeaway interception Jameis Winston again, he's sucked his whole career. Let's be clear. He's never been good at winning. He's not your franchise savior. He's not the player that's going to take you to the fantasy promised land. He's never been that, though. This didn't just change in week one. Oh, my gosh. He still had huge fantasy weeks before, and he's got Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, and they'll probably be better in the future. Yeah, and, and to be fair for Jameis, I mean, O.J. Howard was – like, he had some really big bad blunders. Drops. Bad drops. Drop a really bad fumble that cost the that cost the Buccaneers a lot. And Mike Evans, who – look, there was no way I was benching Mike Evans, but he showed up on the practice report on Friday with an illness, and it looked like Mike Evans was not at 100%. Maybe he had watched Jameis Winston throw the ball <laughs> on film. Maybe that's what had him feeling that way. Sure. Cam Newton, it was a bad game. 25 for 38, 239. I, I'm going to give him a pass. He's coming off the ankle injury. Right. Newton has a way of looking bad at times. He's coming off of his shoulder injury. Sorry, yeah. Well, the shoulder injury you're yes. talking about on the off season. Yes. Yeah. Like, like but in the in the in the preseason, he we didn't even know if yes. he was going to be active. So he's coming off of a couple things. He still has Christian McCaffrey, which solves a lot of problems for him. Jared Goff on the road has not been as good. We brought this up last week. He's just not that. He's not a uh, a trustworthy fantasy quarterback on the road. Now he has to come home but play New Orleans defense next week. It's going to be interesting to see what he's got, if he can bounce back. I would expect better things from him next week. I would too. Even though it's New Orleans D. Baker Mayfield, rut row. Mm, yeah. You, you saw the kind of get down, have to force the ball, try to be the savior. Nick Chubb couldn't get going. The game script wasn't nice. Probably better days ahead for Baker Mayfield, but this, yes. was, this was really embarrassing. It, it certainly was, but... On to next week. Big Ben. I've already been out on the Steelers. I'm not in on them after that performance. He needs better weapons. It will be interesting to see what the Steelers do to change things up because they cannot <laughs> – you can't give Moncrief another 10 targets. Like, Dante Moncrief – He doesn't deserve it. Was, was res- partially responsible for this loss. He was bad. He was real bad. And now they'll be at home against Seattle, and Seattle just made Andy Dalton and John Ross look pretty good. Sure. So bounce back opportunity, but those were the stinkers at quarterback. Uh, you get stinkers of the week time at running back, and there were several. Are you hitting the panic alarm on any of these guys, Mike? Devonta Freeman, 8 for 19. What is most troubling about Devonta Freeman uh, is the offensive line play. Like the, the Vikings – now the Vikings are great up front, but the the Vikings controlled the entire game because their their defensive line was manhandling the the Falcons' offensive line. Freeman did have a fumble. It seemed like he was getting punished for that. Game scripts. It seemed like this isn't. We can actually come back. So it, 
Maybe. Maybe it is just right back to the old 50-50 timeshare with Devonta Freeman. I'm still optimistic that this was just a game that got out of control. I think I am too. James Conner against New England. 10 for 21. 4 for 44 through the air. I get to water you and Jason this week. Unfortunately, you do. So, uh, Seattle next week. You were on the one-yard line, Pittsburgh. Let's oh. throw a fade to Moncrief. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> even Kurt Warner was burning the Steelers for that decision. But even if he scores a touchdown there, yeah, he salvages the day. But Seattle, San Francisco, uh, better days ahead for James Conner? Yes. Carry on, Johnson. I'm not hitting any buttons. Um, well, no, I, I can hit a button for it. Uh, what button? <laughs> um, 16 for 49. This was supposed to be a very plus matchup. I think that's the problem. Yeah. Start, start of the week for Jason. I'd be optimistic about 16 carries. Didn't break any big plays. Didn't get enough work when you wanted him on the field. It, I'm not going to take a carry on victory lap. This is just the problem with Detroit. Matt Patricia, running back by committee. This is a game where they were up and he should have done more. Plain and simple. Yes. 24 to 6. I Kyler think, Murray comes back. And I think that Patricia will realize. I mean, Carry on Johnson was still in for 50 snaps. I mean, he was in for over half of them. Pass protection issues, though. There are pass protection issues, but I, I don't know. I, I'm it's 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 a little concerning. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, prescription wise, I mean, we'll talk more tomorrow, but are you, when you say concerning, are you adjusting expectations? Yes. This isn't, I'm trying to fire sell carry on Johnson. It's just, maybe you got to adjust what we are, what we are hoping for. Okay. Sony Michelle against Pittsburgh. This was so weird. 15 carries, 14 yards, no goal line opportunities. They threw the ball the whole game. Rex Burkhead looked like Philip Lindsay. Sonny Michel looked like Royce Freeman last year. Every time he got a touch, no running room, made nothing out of it, didn't get involved in the passing game. This was a bad game from Sonny Michel when they had, you know, I just, it was just that surprise utilization of Rex Burkhead. I, we, I think we were all flabbergasted by this. Yeah. It's my start of the week. He sucked. Got Miami next week. Should be better. Should be better. Kenyon Drake, Kalen Balanch, combined. To, We're putting them on this list. I mean, I would put them on the list because, well, yeah. I mean, I was. <laughs> hopefully, people weren't. Yeah, hopefully, starting, weren't starting them. them. Yeah, that's a good point. So, but you didn't see anything from that game that made you believe either one could ever be started. Four carries, five carries. It's ugly. Stay away. Stay away. And then Darius Geis. They bench Adrian Peterson. They hand him the ball ten times. He only gains eighteen yards. Didn't look particularly special to me on the field. This is a team that, you know, you could have a lot of Chris Thompson this year. Yeah. If they're coming from behind. Yeah, Chris Thompson, he was a great late-round flyer. He's going to be a very popular pickup as well. At the wide receiver position, stinkers this week, Devontae Adams, yep. Mike Evans, Brandon Cooks. Talked about Stephon Diggs. Robbie Anderson had a number of chances in this game. Ended up only three for 23, facing Tredavious White. I throw this game out the window. I like the targets. Sure. I like the downfield opportunities. Robbie Anderson's always been a player. If he catches one or two of those, he's at the top of the list in the speed demons that won the week. Yeah. It, so I'm not worried about Robbie Anderson. I, I 17 agree. 17 targets to Jamison Crowder? Oh, yeah. Crowder eight. Crowder he's a had, PPR machine. Crowder eight. He had a, a fantastic fantasy game. For Robbie, though, there was at least two times I can remember off the top of my head where he had the defender beat Yes, and Darnold just made a uh, poor throw. Dante Pettis. Goodbye. Had two snaps. Now, he is dealing with the injury. I don't know if he re-aggravated it. I hope he probably re-aggravated his owners. Uh, this was gross. And there were six 49ers receiving more targets, receptions, opportunities than Dante Pettis? Yeah. Dante Doghouse? Is that what I'm going to call him? Uh, they won the it's, game, by the way. It's they, so bizarre, They won man. the football game. What a crazy offseason for Dante Pettis. And this is where we are now after week one. Yeah, I mean, people got mad at the hard pivot. But when when you get new information in you gotta, fantasy... You got to pivot. You just have to change your you opinion. You must pivot. 
You do. And and that, that goes for this week, too. That goes for on into the season. You react. You adjust. You react. You readjust. That's how you win. You don't win at the draft. You set the table, and you move on, and we're that's what this show is. We're trying to provide you as many tools as possible to make adjustment decisions because we're making them, too. Right? Right, Jay Grizz? <laughs> Thank you. No, he, he's sticking with Montgomery, oh, and I don't okay. blame him for that. Um, <laughs> Curtis Samuel, slow start to the season. Had a lot to do with Cam Newton, but three for 32. Same with DJ Moore with the fumble. Uh, Corey Davis, full on unmitigated slaughter of the of the <laughs> of the Browns, oh. and he full on goose. AJ Brown, three for a hundred. Corey Davis, goose city. Man, uh, he was a UDK bust because last year he had every opportunity to be the guy, and it didn't even matter. His target share last year was incredible, and he still couldn't perform. You can cut Corey Davis. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, um, and then uh, w- disappointing game from Sterling Shepard, in my opinion. Six for 42, seven targets. He's not a one. Mike, you've been saying it. Yeah, the, the only guy I'm interested in from the passing attack would be Evan Engram. All right, you had O.J. Howard, Vance McDonald, Eric Ebron, Jack Doyle, and Moali Cox. Oh, wow, you're putting all three Colts in there. Ebron came down with a touchdown, but bobbled it. Jerk. Would have made me look better. <laughs> but uh, I think the one that we need to talk about right now, you know, I'm less concerned about O.J. Howard because he was targeted. He had the fumble. Well, he only had one more target than the, the guy I imagine you're about to bring up. Vance Dance? Yep. Yeah. Uh, problems for Vance McDonald. And, and here's the problem. Not that I don't think he can't be productive for the rest of the year. Uh, because he can. My problem is that now what do you do? Because you have these TJ Hawkinson, Mark Andrews. Right. The other options that you might have drafted in the Vance range. Now what do you do next week? Vance has Seattle. So where are you with the McDonald? I mean, just four targets in the game. The, the, the lack of volume was incredibly surprising, especially when you consider... The volume they were giving to other players, like it was not working. Why didn't you try to go to Vance McDonald a little bit earlier? I'm and optimistic they will. I am too. That, but the the point you bring up of Hawkinson, Mark Andrews, Delaney Walker's probably out there on some waiver wires as, yes. as well. It's really hard not to pivot to one of those guys who seem like they're a more sure bet for higher volume. But I, I have Vance McDonald and Mark Andrews in my dynasty league. Mark Andrews is on my bench this week. He was keeping Deshaun Jackson company uh, while I proceeded to lose on that league. And like I said, though, Moncrief had 10 targets. Like, it's it's hard to imagine the Steelers go back and they watch what went wrong with this game and then don't get Vance McDonald a little bit more involved. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could put basically every Steeler on the, on the stinker list. Oh, my gosh. Breaking news. This is exactly why. What? On Sunday morning, I thought about dropping Adrian Peterson. Darius Geis had an MRI this morning on the other non-ACL knee. He's going to miss time. The hope is that he doesn't need surgery, but the team is doing a full evaluation. Oh, he gained 18 yards on 10 carries. Did not look like himself. I just brought that up. He did not look explosive. He is now going to – Adrian Peterson rules again. This – Poor kid, Can you believe man. this? That poor kid. I was so close to dropping Peterson because I was going to, you know, pick up somebody like John Brown on the morning. Just that's a that's a tip, by the way. Like if you are in a position where you can move a guy to your IR on Sunday morning and pick somebody else up as a flyer, the two guys I was looking at this week, John Brown, Jamison Crowder, both would have been great pre waiver pickups for free without Fab dollars. Kept AP. Darius Geis, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, more reaction on that tomorrow when we get more information. Uh, I think that's it for today's show. Those were the stinkers of the week. What a stink to finish it, too. The stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters is the best in odor defense. Let's eat up that need, odor. You need to eat the odor of this week. Yes. And honestly, well, not us. Let the Odor Eaters do it. Well, Odor Eaters needs to do it, but as a fantasy football owner in week one, you need to 
you need to do something to kind of take away the sting of anticipation and disappointment because it is a long season. Go get right? a, go get a nice massage. Get a pedicure. Just, look, put a deodorizing odor eaters into that shoe. That is and well. Just, just assuage yourself. Is that a word? I don't know if it is. It is now. I think it's a word. It, it sounded could be. like a word. The the purpose of that word, if it's if I'm inventing it, is just you know take the edge off of your of your fears. You know what's wild in our language? We have. What's wild, Mike? We have these defined words, and then you'll say something, yeah, and you and everyone knows exactly what you mean by the word, even if it's the wrong word. And you say, "Well, that's not a real word." Nothing was a real word until <laughs> someone said, "Okay, that is now a real word." Are you trying to give us carte blanche on our words, Mike? I'm just saying that if I use a word, it makes sense in context. It sounds like a great word, and everyone around me knows what I meant. That's a word. That's good enough. All right, that is it for today's show. Pristine Auction, we want to thank them. The studio sponsor, Marlon Mack, a signed jersey yesterday at pristineauction.com, $68.80. I'm going to give you a little tip here. You could go to pristineauction.com and use the registration code BALLERS. But what I think you should do is you should go to footclangiveaway.com, and one of the ways that you can win that Alvin Kamara jersey is to register at Pristine Auction. You'll get a little entry into the giveaway, two birds, one stone, one account, free to create pristineauction.com use the code ballers and you'll be set up with a chance to win and you can browse their hundreds of daily auctions that is it i hope we have jason back tomorrow i don't know if we will or not yeah but jay grizz will be here if not and we'll break down the waiver wire we'll for see a you very big week one tomorrow goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, wouldn't it be amazing if you could make your favorite restaurant sliders at home? Problem, meat, solution. White Castle sliders are available at your grocery store. They're made with 100% beef patties, Steamed on a bed of grilled onions. I'm getting hungry. Pick up some sliders from the grocery store and make it a slider night. Go to whitecastle.com slash footballers and you get a $1 off coupon on any pack of four or six White Castle sliders.